This is Tom Rudebush, and this is Hard Rocker Highlights from the Hard Rocker Locker Room down at Denham Field at O'Hara Stadium. We're with head coach Dan Kratzer, and we're going to talk recruiting. And uh, Dan, the recruiting process begins, I'm told, with uh, 5,200 names at the initial process, and, and it probably narrows pretty quickly. Well, it does. You know, the first thing that Coach Derringer does is he compiles the list of, of over 5,000 or whatever it might be, you know, from year to year, but it was a little bit larger this year than, than ever before. Uh, and then the second thing is uh, we start narrowing it down to, hey, who, who are the math, science, and engineering people? And so consequently when you, when you get down uh, to that area, it narrows it down to more like 500 instead of 5,000. Uh, including the recruit on the phone right now. Call the one that's trying to call right now, and I think that's uh, Coach Derringer, our recruiting coordinator's phone, that uh, uh, he doesn't have access right now to. <laughs> when you look at this board, Dan, I think there's 279 names on the board right here. And as you went into this recruiting season, what areas were you specifically looking at maybe to try to... Uh, reinforce, so to speak, or what positions are you really looking at to recruit? Yeah. Well, the, really the first thing that we do, Tom, is we say, uh, where, where are our needs? And then we say, okay, now where are these kids that are going to be engineers first? Even above the math and science guys, because we want kids that are committed to the program. And if they're committed to their engineering degree, we know we're going to have them for four years or five years. And so. Uh, that's the the most important thing first and then uh, we start offensive and defensive linemen are our are, are priority every year and uh, until we get to the skill level people that's a priority for us because um, as we talk from week to week that's that's where you're going to win games you know it's it all starts up front so we have our list of offensive linemen and defensive linemen and uh, as, we do, as we go down the list here, basically, uh, we want to recruit a quarterback every year. And this year, we needed to recruit some running backs and defensive backs and linebackers. So we basically put them in that kind of a order. And then a lot of times, uh, the, the last guy as a priority is a tight end kind of person because those guys can play a lot of positions. And, uh, you know, you can take a tight end and high school and a good one, and he might be a defensive end, he might be a linebacker, uh, he might be a guy that can flex out and be a receiver. Uh, so they're kind of really good athletes. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just kind of a never-ending thing, and the, the good thing about it is that, you know, we're going to have uh, 15 seniors next year, so we're going to have some, a nucleus to start building depth with, and that's kind of what this recruiting class will be. And, the unfortunate thing is, you know, we only have a spot for about 30 kids off this board. And we'd like to have, you know, we'd like to have about 50 of them or, <laughs> when I look or at more. The, at the board, it's uh, uh, like quarterbacks. You have, I think, 21 quarterbacks listed there, and you have their name, their height, weight, and their state. And I see the state of Wyoming, Kansas, Texas, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, I think that's Arkansas, California, Wisconsin, Idaho, um, Connecticut, uh, Colorado, Oregon. I mean, that's, a, that's a, a lot of states. That's a national recruiting scope right there. Well, it is. And, uh, you know, if, if we were to land any of those guys, we'd be pretty happy. You know, and, and that's, that's why we have those priorities on our board. But, you know, when it comes to, uh, again, the state and the territory where we're recruiting, uh, the most important factor is that they want engineering, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we we just we have to keep that a priority. Uh, you know we talked a little bit about specific needs. You know you'd like to have another guy like Jamie Dale, uh, a guy that can run the ball and give you a hundred yards there. And you think, well, maybe we should look at the junior college route and that type of thing. And that's that always comes into the picture when people are stepping to the next level and. We sat back, looked at a couple of people, evaluated some things, and, and said, well, you know, we're going we're gonna to stay with our philosophy that's gotten us this far. We're going to recruit high school players that want engineering, uh, and that's, that's a priority to us and, and for the school. And we think that's in the best interest of our program, this school, 
and where we're going in Division Two. And when you and when you look at recruiting from an engineering standpoint, Dan, when you when you recruit a young man, give us the top three things that you tell them when you're recruiting them to come to the School of Mines. <clears throat> well, the top thing is that that they have to uh, uh, know where they're going. You know, and if if they if they want to be an engineer but they're not certain which area they want to be in, we say hey, that's fine. But you need to decide in the first year and a half uh, that you're in school uh, which direction you're going. And then the second thing is, uh, we want you to have a passion for the game of football. And if you don't, you're not going to make it at this level. You, you got to love the game. You got to you got to be willing to make that kind of commitment that it takes uh, at the college level. And so, you know, those are the, the first two and, and most important priorities uh, above all else. You know, we, we know they have their academic straight and they know where they're going to go and have a passion for the game. And, you know, if, if we can fulfill those two ingredients in the recruiting process, uh, we, we feel like we've got the right person. Will the timetable change as far as NCAA when you would like to have your recruiting completed as opposed to when you're recruiting under NAIA rules? I mean, would you like to be done by the end of February or something like that? Yeah, and I, I think that's what will happen here uh, in, in the next year or so because, you know, we only have so much room uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, for players and, and we only have uh, so many coaches to be able to coach effectively uh, a number of players. And uh, like, like I said, if we get 30 football players in this freshman class, uh, every locker in our locker room will be full. And, you know, wh wh where do you put anybody else? And again, we're more selective on the walk-ons now. Uh, you know, five years ago, uh, anybody that wanted to come on and told me they had a passion for the game and wanted to try to play, uh, we let them. We didn't turn anybody down because we needed the numbers. Uh, and that's not the case now. Now we need, we need quality uh, uh, more than quantity. Uh, although you need a, a, a good number of walk-ons in order to keep the program going and keep your uh, ability to practice effectively, uh, you know, with scout teamers and that kind of thing. But we want those guys that are going to walk on that we feel like in a year or two uh, maybe still be players, and they may earn some scholarship money at that point in time. But uh, you know, we'll, you know, half half of our team will have some scholarship dollars uh, in this incoming class, and the other half of the freshmen will be preferred walk-ons, which will be guys that will be trying to earn some additional scholarship money. But some of those guys will have academic money, because you know we've got some kids that are 4.0 students, and we say, hey, you know, you're not, you're not. Uh, uh, a football scholarship guy this year, but you could be in a year or two, but you very well could be an academic scholarship guy, so apply for that academic money. We're with head coach Dan Kratzer. We're taking an inside look at Hard Rocker recruiting. Dan, your recruiting has certainly expanded since you've been here. You know, Literally, it's almost coast to coast and border to border now, but you do still look and try to recruit local kids, uh, South Dakota, recruits and the region and and uh, going to Division two though really does limit you in the number of prospects you can find well it, it does Tom uh, you know as you as you increase your uh, uh, your positions in in the, the realm of college football you know when you go from NAIA to division three to division two II to one double a and division one uh, the pool does shrink you know the skill level uh, is becomes more and more important, and you you can't spend as much time recruiting potential and having a guy develop and, and so forth. So it's a, it's a little bit different, but you know we still uh, we still try to recruit uh, on a local basis first. You know the South Dakota kids that are interested in engineering, and uh, you know we feel like the. We've had a better response this year because of our NCAA Division II future affiliation. And, uh, you know, we have a couple of young men interested from Sioux Falls area, which is, you know, an area that we just haven't been able to break into very well in football with, 
with two really good programs over there in Augustana and uh, and and Sioux Falls both, and now they're both Division Two, uh, but now we are too. So maybe that'll that'll help uh, and and uh, make the students in that area and the athletes more aware of the fact that uh, we do have a quality football program. You know, South Dakota State obviously now being D1 and having an engineering program certainly is getting a lot of uh, potential athletes looking at them, but there is a break where State obviously is looking for a little bit different athlete than you are. Do you think that being Division II with a possible engineering student that will not be recruited by South Dakota State will now give you an opportunity to recruit that, that player? Oh, I, yeah, I think so. Uh, obviously, if we were, uh, you know, if they were still Division II and we were still Division II, uh, we'd be going after the same guy. And uh, I think we could win that battle, you know. But uh, since they stepped up, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult. And, uh, and, you know, the caliber of athlete that they're looking for is a little bit better now also. But uh, it'll open some doors for us. I, I do do believe that. And you know, it's with uh, uh, you know University of South Dakota and, and South Dakota State both being Division One now, uh, then we're in essence in the west side of the state right now, the uh, one of the main Division Two programs in the state. So you know, it, it, again. It'll all play out as the years pass, but uh, we've seen a, a, an incredible increase in the, in the interest uh, uh, because of this move. And, and you said that uh, since the school announced its de decision to intentions and with the NCAA accepting the university into the uh, transitionary stage, you found more interest from potential recruits. Well, we have, because you know, on a nationwide uh, level, uh, there are areas in the United States where the NAI doesn't exist. And so when we would go out and, and try to explain who we were, it was, it was rather difficult. And, uh, you know, now everybody knows what NCAA Division II football is. And so uh, I think that has been, uh, you know, the main cause for a, a little bit more interest is because uh, all those programs around the country uh, can recognize the NCAA, whereas, as I said, you know, there were so many places in the United States where the NAI existed, but just in spots. And so uh, it was, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game now. Dan Kratzer, head coach of the Hard Rockers, talking about his recruiting for this upcoming season. And this is Tom Rudenbush with Coach Dan Kratzer, and this is Hard Rocker Highlights.